what are s-object variables, s-object collections, and loops. Revisited. Hey there, was it apprentices? First of all, thank you very much for watching and for all the comments I've received. My heavens. A lot of the questions I've gotten have been around S objects, collections, and loops. So I thought what we'll do is we'll revisit this topic today and we'll use a little bit of a different metaphor that we use. So this metaphor is something I am actually borrowing from my good friend Mark Ross, also known as Salesforce Yoda, who uh, came up with this and uh, uh, used this metaphor in a hands-on training at Dreamforce 15. Now that hands-on training is actually available online and you'll see the link of that in the show notes. So first, what's an S object variable? Well, an S object variable is basically this thing. Now for the really young folks out there, this is what's called a CD. It is uh, a piece of medium that used to go into CD players or your computer and uh, people used to buy music off on this stuff, believe it or not. Now. This is our S object variable. It can hold a lot of data. Uh, so it could hold an entirety of an account, every single field or a case or an opportunity or so forth. But it can only hold a single object at a time. So we couldn't put an account and a case on this particular CD. So this is an S object variable. It's basically a record in Salesforce with a whole bunch of different fields on it. If we have a whole bunch of different types of records, we would have a collection or actually in this situation this is a spindle uh, back in the day basically you had this piece of plastic with a pole and you would just conveniently put your cds on this nice little hole here um, and our metaphor this is our s object collection it is something that holds multiple cds or multiple s object variables it can only hold one object tag at a time. So we could not put an S object variable for an opportunity and an account in the spindle. It could only be all accounts or all opportunities. So what happens when we get to the loops? Well, what a loop does is it takes our spindle and goes through each of the items in the spindle. The way it does this is you define what the S object collection is in the, for the loop and create an S object variable that will hold the items in the spindle. So we basically end up with two variables every single time we want to use a loop. We can use an S object collection and an S object variable. What the loop does is it goes through and says, hey, I'm at the first iteration of the loop. I'm going to take the very first S object variable in the loop pass it down to the next element and then you can do whatever you want you could pass it to a decision and see if that has meets some sort of criteria pass it to an assignment to maybe create a new record or update a variable and then pass it to another assignment if you're going to uh, do a fast update on only some of the records or you're going to create brand new records and then back to the loop when it goes back to the loop the record doesn't go back into the collection what the loop does is it basically says okay i'm done this with this particular record, I don't need it anymore. Uh, I'll fix that later. What it does is it goes and takes the next record, passes it down the element, and repeats. So effectively, what the loop is simply doing is taking each CD off the spindle one at a time, doing a bunch of stuff with it, and then discarding it when it's done with it. That is, in effect, what loops do. The typical way that we use this is we start with what's called a fast lookup. This is an element that lets you look up multiple records or a single record. If you're looking up multiple records, for example, saying all counts where the type is customer, then you're going to want to assign all the values that come to the fast lookup as of S object collection or our spindle. If you are only ever going to be doing a single record, for example, accounts where the ID equals this, but we wouldn't do that because hard coding IDs is a no-no, you could use just an S object variable, but then you wouldn't need a loop or anything like that unless you're, say, cloning that record into multiple records. So typically when we're using a collection uh, as object variables and loops, we're doing a fast lookup, saving those values or those records into our collection, taking the collection over to our loop. The loop then goes ahead and takes off each 
CD or each record and does a bunch of stuff with it. When you're within that loop, some of the common things people will do is they'll pass it to an assignment and that assignment can either update a value that's on this particular CD or our particular record, or it can say, I'm gonna take the values on this record and use it as the basis to create a new record. So for example, maybe we are cloning accounts or perhaps we're creating an opportunity or a series of opportunities and we want to grab the name and the customer type, the address and some other things like that and pass it to the opportunity. So we use an assignment with a different S object variable that are, will represent our, either our updated record or our new records. Um, typically, it's going to be new records if you're using a brand new S object variable. Um, you, if you're just updating, you could use the existing one. It kind of depends on how you like to keep things clean. You can pass it to a, another assignment, which takes your new record and puts it into a new S object collection where it represents all the new records. When your loop is done, that new collection will get passed to a fast create or potentially a fast update and say, go create or update all the records that are represented in our spindle. So that's really the basics of how you use an S object variable collection and loop. You always go and start with the collection in most cases, pass it to a loop, go for a single variable, which represents a single record within the collection, do some stuff with it, pass it to another collection, and then do a fast create or fast update. So I hope this metaphor is a little bit more clear for everyone. If you have a question, please leave a comment. Even if you just have a general comment about how you like these videos or don't like these videos or what you wanna see, I do read all the comments and I do my best to try to reply to all of them. So again, thank you for watching and remember the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.